Welcome to the monthly Lumen Fellow webinar. This is the February webinar and we are focusing on biology and our Waymaker biology specifically. Uh, my name is Jenny Felt. I'm the VP of Partnerships at Lumen and I'll spend uh, just a few minutes, maybe about 10 minutes, giving you a brief overview of our just our Waymaker product. Um, and then Giselle Miller, who is Lumen's course product manager for STEM, is going to talk about some of the features and highlights of our four biology courses. And then we're especially excited to have Allison Von Briesen from Central Piedmont Community College. She's a faculty member there, and she's going to share her experience and her students' experience of teaching with Waymaker this past semester. So just starting out and talking a little bit about our Waymaker um, courseware is as we come in, um, Waymaker um, curates the best available OER content out there. We align it with learning outcomes and organize it into a course structure. And then faculty members have the ability to customize and reorder content to make sure that it fits their, lumen, uh, their learning outcomes, uh, length of term, and any other factors they want to customize for. The OER content includes complete text, video, simulations, a lot of interactives for students. It's all in a digital courseware. We also include uh, human-graded performance assessments, PowerPoint slides, and a really large quiz bank that can be customized as well. Um, we use an LTI connection to make sure that it embeds the course content in your LMS. Research does show us that frequent practice and feedback are an important ingredient to developing mastery. So in our learning design for Waymaker courses, we look for ways to engage students in interactive practice and feedback as they go through the material. Learning by doing is a very effective strategy for most learners. As students work through the OER content through this interactive study plan that you can see on the screen right now, data from pretests, self-checks, and quiz attempts are all reflected back to students. And then the study plan gives each student personalized signposts to show them where they're struggling and how to focus their attention and effort to improve learning. Waymaker provides this feedback to students about their learning and it encourages them to reflect on them on the learning. They aren't served up the next piece of content, but they're encouraged to use their agency to make better choices about how to develop, to develop mastery. Waymaker also provides recommendations to instructors about who needs help and what they're struggling with. So it includes pre-built template messages that can be customized to quickly identify students needing help. With a single click, faculty members can send individualized messages and as instructors use this capability, they tell us it helps them build a deeper connection and rapport with their students. By proactively sending these types of messages, faculty members help students understand they care and they're here to help them succeed. Especially with the at-risk students, we find that if the first reach out to them is asking them if they need help, come on in and get help, they're much less likely to respond and, um, unless they've had that rapport built with instructors where Waymaker assists with that. It also gives them a lot more confidence and motivation to persist, to persist through the content and complete the class. Waymaker also lets you set up completely automated messages that go out at timely moments to offer metacognitive nudges, reminders, and encouragement. Um, this is a very easy way for instructors to efficiently get information out to their students, and it also further deepens their personal connections between students and faculty. On the screen, you can see the impact a completely automated message has on a student behavior. Uh, the instructor suggests that the students dive a little bit deeper into the materials and that they use the self-check. And the student responds back that they will indeed take a second look at the material before they retake the course. So again, making that change in behavior with the automated messages is a really simple way to make students more effective in the materials. This is an actual email message exchange during our, um, back in 2016 in the Waymaker course. Faculty members have the um, option to set up the automated messages that the system sends out on their behalf at appropriate moments to provide this helpful guidance and encouragement to students. Here you can see several screenshots of Waymaker courses and different LMSs. Today, Waymaker integrates seamlessly with Canvas, Blackboard, D2L or Brightspace, and Moodle. We do see that faculty members typically customize Waymaker courses at some level and that that's really important to them to be able to have that customization. Um, many instructors are bringing our Waymaker courseware into um, preset template courses that the institutions have. 
So it's very easy to bring it into that kind of formula or into an existing course that instructors have. Um, it helps them, a lot of times they'll customize to make sure that the course content aligns with their learning outcomes, their instructional preferences, and also the students' needs at their individual institutions. It's really easy to, way, uh, to modify Waymaker courses in all of these list, ways listed. And it's also easy to modify Waymaker in other ways um, with Lumen's help if there are, is something that you're looking to or your faculty are looking to modify that's not on this list. I typically we see the most typical modifications that we see are just the um, alignment with learning outcomes. They may remove or add modules or move things around a little bit to fit the way that their courses go. We also see some instructors modifying test banks or quizzes um, or adding content that they currently use, like assignments that they use um, in order to supplement the materials. Then we, um, Women's Waymaker Biology courses are all $25 per student per enrollment. And we partner with Follett and work with institutions to consider flexible payment options that best support their goals for OER adoptions and student success. We find that Follett included is the preferred method because that way students come into the courseware. Um, they're never asked for an activation code. There's never any, um, any reason for the student to lose access to any of the quizzes or, or tests that are going on there. Um, we also do it through a bookstore activation code and for the follow-up managers online that's actually printed on the receipt. Students can purchase it online or in store. It's printed up for them and then they go ahead and enter it directly through their course in the LMS. Um, in all cases students are paying significantly less than the commercial textbook and they have access to their course materials from the first day of class. We find that faculty can start teaching right away and students don't fall behind because their financial aid is delayed or because they can't afford the textbook. Um, the final option that's listed here is an annualized fee. We do typically work that with larger system um, offices that are interested in that, but if you're interested in that, we can work with Follett um, to get that uh, in place as well. So I'll go ahead and pause for a minute and check the chat. Um, you do have audio options available that will go ahead and open up um, questions at the very end. If you do have questions as we go along, please enter them in the chat. And I'll make sure that Giselle and Allison get those questions and can answer those for you. But let me just double check right now. I'm going to go ahead and stop my share because I'm going to turn it over to Giselle next. Um, let's see if we've got any questions in the chat. Not so many. So Giselle is Lumen's um, course product manager for STEM. She's worked extensively on our biology courses. And so she's just going to highlight some of the features in the biology course, as well as um, look at things that really make the course special. So go ahead, Giselle. Hey, everybody. I'm going to have to take about 30 seconds to figure out how to share what I want to share. Can you find the share screen at the bottom, Giselle? If you hover down at the bottom, it says share screen. Yeah, I'm just trying to make sure that you all don't have to see my cluttered desktop in the process. Okay, so um, I have here, you should be able to see the four tabs at the top of this browser. Um, that's gonna highlight all four of our Waymaker biology options. So we have um, our biology for major series, which is one and two, as well as the biology for non-majors in one and two. So I'm just gonna hop into a couple different places of these courses to highlight um, some of the, the awesome learning features that we have in them. So this is our Bio for Majors one course. And I'm gonna scroll down to module eight of cell division and we're gonna look at the mitosis page. Um, and as you can see in all of our text content, we have a lot of um, great figures and images to help illustrate the concepts that are being taught. Um, the key feature in here that I wanted to show everybody is this interactive pathway activity. <clears throat> and so these are scattered throughout the course and it gives students an opportunity to actually interact with the concepts um, and practice the knowledge that they've learned. Um, so here they have a couple options as to just be quizzed on the content they've learned, dig into the details and have it kind of walk them through one step at a time. Um, and this, like Joni was saying before, is learning by doing is the key within these Waymaker courses. Um, and this is just one opportunity that they have to do that. 
So I'll just click through a few things so that you can see kind of what that looks like. So this is just teaching them. And then there'll be an option where they can actually test their own learning and say, I think that it's this. And there's always feedback given of some form within um, the incorrect answers, which is a really nice feature as well. So those interactive pathway activities, like I said, are scattered throughout. Um, let's see, what else did I wanna show you in this course? Oh, just to take a look at the learning outcomes. So if we go to the full list of learning outcomes for bio for majors one, um, <clears throat> one of the things that Joni highlighted before is our really extensive assessments. And so each of these learning outcomes, we have a minimum of six questions that are available um, for use, which is, is really nice um, for whether you're creating your own quizzes from our test banks or you're using what's already there, it's pulling from those six questions. So there's a diversity of questions within each learning outcome, which is a great feature. Okay, let's hop over to Bio for Majors 2. Um, and I'm gonna go into course contents at a glance so that you can see how extensive the content is within this course. So we developed this course to be what we call a fat course. So it contains um, much more content that is teachable within um, a typical time frame of a course but it allows the faculty or the institution to decide exactly which topics they would like to cover and how they'd like to um, approach bio two. So there's an overview of body systems or there's um, a section that goes into details for each of the body systems. So depending on how a faculty member wants to teach this course, um, they have all of those modules available to them. Another feature within Bio for Majors 2, uh, we have another interactive, which we look at as kind of flashcard options. Um, and this is a nice interactive, especially for a really memorization heavy subject like these body systems. So here we have a virus. Um, sorry, I have somebody covering it. Um, I have a activity um, with these flashcards on viruses and so it helps students click between them and really understand and memorize better what the words and topics are within that section. Um, we also have in this course some really great assignments um, and what's nice about these assignments is I, I would call them actually meaningful to the students and their life. So this assignment, for example, called medical experience has students kind of analyze um, a medical condition that they're somehow related to, whether it's their own, someone in their family, a friend, and to look into how it's diagnosed, what those impacts are, um, and write about them in a meaningful way. So there's some great assignments in there also. Um, looking into bio for non-majors one, we have, if I go down to module 11, with, which is trait inheritance, I'm going to go to non-Mendelian inheritance. And in this page, you can see some of the in-page practice that are, is given to students. And this is a really great opportunity for them, again, to interact with the content and to test themselves to see if they're really understanding what's going on and giving them feedback and examples along the way. So here's another question. After they're given um, a scenario, they have to answer it. And then we give a, a sample answer of what that would look like. So that's that in-page practice. Another great feature um, this one also has some interactive pathway activities. So I'll just show you a different one because it's a little, a little different than the first. I'm going to go to this. Let's see. Cellular respiration has another really great interactive um, that has different pathways that students will end up down depending on how they select their first answer. So it's kind of like a choose your own adventure in terms of what they're learning and picking up. And so every time they 
they do this, this actual activity again, they're getting something new and learning something different from it. And in bio for non-majors too, there are a couple other things I wanted to show you. So I have an assignment here that spans multiple modules and has lots of different learning outcomes that it's testing. So this assignment is about ecotourism and the student is supposed to talk about biotic and abiotic components. Um, and so they've learned this beyond just a single module and they have to take what they've learned from all the different modules and apply it to this one assignment. Okay. And one last thing that I wanted to show is in module three. That's not right. It must be module 13. The skeletal system. So this is a great page to just show um, how students are engaged beyond just reading of text. So there's figures, there's photographs, um, and then as much as we can, we've also inserted videos to help teach those same concepts. So they're getting those concepts in different ways um, for different learning styles. One other thing that I think Joni mentioned is our ability to make data-driven improvements. So as we collect data from student responses, we can learn a lot about how our assessment questions are doing and we assess those on a regular basis. So one of the projects that I um, just completed was going through all of the biology for majors one questions and where student performance was at its worst and trying to analyze why student performance was at that level. And so I would go back and look at both the assessment questions and the content and figure out how we can um, better teach that learning outcome to students. So whether that's rewriting the assessment question um, or adding figures or videos into the content to make that immediate improvement for student learning is really exciting. So rather than waiting for you know, the second edition of a, of a textbook to come out in a year or two, um, I can just make those fixes immediately. And then as Allison can probably tell you, she's recently been emailing me a few different things that she's found. Um, so if she finds an issue with an assessment question or she finds an issue in the text, she literally just sends it to our support team. It goes directly to me and I can immediately fix it so that the next time her students are in there three days later, um, they're getting fixed or better content. So that's what I wanted to show you for those four courses and you're welcome to ask more questions um, towards the end. I'm not sure Joni what the plan was next. I didn't know if Allison wanted to, to speak to her experience or what you had planned. You're still on mute, Joni. Thank you. Um, I'm going to steal the screen share from you, quick Giselle, and just jump in the slides. Giselle did post. Um, let me get in here. And Giselle, you want to keep an eye on the chat for just a minute and see if we had any questions. Um, let me present. Giselle did give us kind of an up, um, some highlights on these, on the slides that will show you um, the biology, the things that she talked about right now. So here's a list for the biology one and two for majors. One thing that I'll comment on as well, um, we have had some instructors reach out and want to do a combination of bio one and two for majors or bio one and two for non-majors. So we're able to combine those two courses as well and deliver that so that you can do a little bit of combination there. And then here are the highlights for the non-majors as well. So go ahead and type any questions in the chat or we can, um, Giselle can answer those quickly. Let me give you just a minute. Um. And then we're, I'll go ahead and turn the screen share over to Allison. Allison has been teaching with our uh, Waymaker Biology courses, and she's just going to provide a fact, her experience that she's taught with it and bring in what her students have experienced as well. So I'll go ahead and turn the screen share over to you, Allison. Okay. 
give me just a moment. I'm not super familiar with it, so let's make sure I get the right screen. Hi, everybody. How are you? Um, as she said, I'm Allison, and I teach at Central Piedmont Community College. And we're a pretty big school um, in Charlotte, North Carolina. We have about mm, 20 to 25,000 students. And um, most of them at some point in their academic career come through um, the science building to take the sequence biology, general biology one and two. Um, currently in uh, this semester, we have 22 sections of bio 111 and 14 sections of bio 112. We typically don't offer as many sections of 112 as we do 111 because not everyone progresses on to the um, next course in the sequence. And so if all of our courses were full, then which most of them are, all definitely all of the online courses um, and most of the seated sections are full, that would be about eight, I don't know, 825 to 850 students this semester who are using Lumen. Um, so about a year ago, uh, the discipline chairs for, we have co-chairs for biology suggested that we decide whether we wanted to update to the newest edition, we were going to have to do that or adopt a new text. Um, and as you can imagine, we were a little bit anxious about changing to an entirely new textbook, but it happened to coincide with a really aggressive campaign by CPCC to make every single course ADA compliant by, I think it was early in the summer. But of course, if you're an, a 10 month faculty member, that means that you have to get it done by the end of the semester, which for us was just a couple of months away. And it was pretty huge, especially for online courses. Um, we needed to have all of our PowerPoints with alternative text for pictures and videos needed to be captioned. And um, some of the resources that students accessed through our, at, at that time, through our publishing company, you know, they had um, animations and things like that and everything needed to be compliant. So when we approached the publishing company we were using at that time, we found out they were not going to be able to accommodate the pretty, you know, strict guidelines for ADA compliance until actually this semester. So we would have gone all of fall without resources that were ADA compliant. That was a huge issue for us. So we really started <laughs> into other resources and I happened to have gone to a distance learning conference where I learned about OER. I was really passionate about it and I had actually been giving um, presentations across the college um, and collaborating a little bit outside the college about OER and I had researched different resources and of course Lumen kind of um, bubbled up to the top and uh, particularly Waymaker. Um, so uh, one of the first things we asked is are you ADA compliant? And immediately we got an email within like 20 minutes with the VPAT, which is the document that shows the compliance. Um, and I, I'm sure all of you are aware of how important ADA compliance is right now. And so we knew right away, we, we didn't have to worry about that. Um, some of the other publishing companies, we had a little bit of trouble getting that information or we didn't know who to talk to. And so it was nice to have that resolved immediately. Um, so then we could move on to our next issue, which of course is cost for our students. Um, our students were paying about $170 a semester for like half the book so that we didn't make them purchase. They could purchase the whole book at once, obviously, but we had it split custom published so that they bought part one and part two. Uh, and so that was $170 included the, the physical book as well as the access code to the resources provided by the publisher. Um, Lumen Waymaker was at the bookstore. The bookstore does have a markup here. Um, students purchased that at the bookstore and it's printed out for them. The code is printed out and they uh, get the book for $35. That is, of course, online access and access to the PDF. They don't get a physical book. I have not had a single student <laughs> have any problem with if they want something printed out, they can just print out the PDF, which I provide for them um, in my Blackboard shell. We do use Blackboard, by the way. Um, so this semester alone, we could have saved students, uh, it looks like up to, I think it was 840,000, uh, I mean, $84,000. <laughs> so 840 would be a little bit extravagant, but so um, between 82, $84,000 saved just this semester. 
Um, and I think that's phenomenal, especially in our, with our student population, many of them are under-resourced and um, as a result, our students are actually buying the book. So um, in the past, students were either renting the book at a, or they were getting it used from another resource. Then they would have to go and find the access code somehow, get that. Um, it was just really a, like a whole jumble of a mess because people were getting their resources in a lot of different ways. Now, they just go straight to the bookstore, they get their um, code, and they're good to go. Um, the other issue was this, when I, and, it, and I was the one who initially proposed Lumen to my colleagues, um, let's say we were all pretty comfortable with the resources that were integrated into the LMS. We were pr pretty um, comfortable with having, you know, PowerPoints that we could build on. I don't think anybody really uses PowerPoints just like straight out the way they come to us, uh, but we did rely on them. And one of the problems is then you don't, you don't own the images or any of the material. So if you're modifying it, are you really being, um, you know, compliant with copyright laws? And OER kind of eliminates that issue. Um, so, but the problem is if, if you go to what people think of as OER, then you don't have access to these resources. You don't have, the, what did they call them? Adaptive assignments, you know, things like that, that really help your student to learn the material. and. It, everyone feels like it's all on them. And we had people, we had like two months. So we were like, we're not going to be able to do that in two months, develop new assignments, new PowerPoints with images that are not, you know, from a uh, publishing company that are open source. So um, Waymaker came with everything that we needed. And I was able to reassure my, my colleagues that you will have material that's as robust or more robust than what you were getting from your from our previous publishing company. Oh, and remember, it's ADA compliant. And um, so they were, were a lot more open to Waymaker as a product, even though it did have a small cost associated with it. It meant that we wouldn't have um, kind of, you know, weak material those first couple of semesters when we changed over to a new textbook where we didn't have a lot of resources um, because we were doing everything sort of on the fly. Everything was there. Um, in fact, it was better actually when we started looking at it than our previous publishing company because we had, I think we had assignments that were integrated into the LMS. You could click, the students could click and access the assignments, but everything else, there was just this like link to material that was in this nebulous space somewhere in the interwebs. Um, and I don't think any of us really investigated that much and we didn't really think students were using them when we asked questions about it. They didn't even know what it was. If students tried to access it, they were confused about how to get to it. So those are the problems, many, some of the problems that were addressed using um, Waymaker. Honestly, it took a while for me to narrow down to those because there were a lot of things that my nitpick, nitpicky self could say I had a problem with with previous publishers that were resolved with Lumen. Um, so again, you could probably tell from this really text heavy slide, had a hard time choosing what to, to focus on because there are a lot of things that we really have loved about uh, Waymaker. So first of all, it was incredibly easy for it to be set up. In fact, I I was really shocked because I came into my office on that first day of fall semester when we got two weeks to work thinking, okay, here we go. It's going to be a loaded couple of weeks and everything was there. Everything I needed was already in a format that I could modify kind of quickly and easily. Um, and it's, it's just there. I didn't have to go out to the publishing company website find the material, figure out how to link everything and sync it, make a course. I mean, you would have to make a course and then you have to sync it with your course and you have to copy a previous month semester's course. And all of that was eliminated. It was just there. It was in an understandable format for me. And even better, it had a really robust test bank <laughs> that meant that I had thousands of questions, literally thousands of questions already there ready to roll. So my students, um, when I make a test for an online class, I have usually I think minimum of maybe four or 500 questions and I have 
the um, LMS randomly select 50 questions for each student. So I don't think any, any student will have um, an identical test. Who knows what they're doing in an online class? I think most of my students are honest, but you know, it is feasible that they could share their results with one another. It pretty much eliminates my concern about that. Um, so for online classes, it's really helpful. I've also, uh, you are not, you don't get like a, a word document with the test questions, but it's fairly easy to figure out how to um, integrate those questions into a paper test too. Um, most any system I've used, I've been teaching now since the 90s, and um, I've used test banks sometimes. I don't use them all the time. Every time I use a test bank, there's going to be an error somewhere. You're going to have an answer that's keyed wrong, something like that. And as Giselle referred to earlier, um, I just shoot out an email um, and the next day or, or that day, depending on when I, I send out the email, um, helps, I guess, that I'm on the email post. Um, it's fixed. It's done. It's, there's no problem with that. So, um, they respond really quickly. I would say they're a very agile team because whenever we see something that we think might need to be modified in some way, we send an email out, as Giselle said. Um, I communicate pretty regularly. I'm, I'm one of those you know, people who's really particular about the way things are um, articulated to my students. So, um, so I just send something out to, to them and it's fixed really quickly. In fact, there was one thing in the last week, we had something that um, one of my colleagues identified a vacuole or a vesicle was labeled as a vacuole, I think was one thing. And the response was, oh, this is gonna take a little while because we need to change it in the PDF and we need to change it here and there and everywhere. It was fixed like the next day. So if that's what they think takes is taking a while, I'm pretty happy with that. So they're really um, agile. And as a result, they are adaptable as you get, you know, revisions to our understanding of things, particularly in the sciences. Um, they are able to make those changes on the fly, which I love, um, especially when we're talking about in biology 112, where our understanding of how species are and how organisms are related to one another changes and the names of phyla change, the names of organisms change, they can make those changes pretty quickly. Um, you cannot do, replicate that at all in a um, regular printed textbook because you've got to wait for the next edition, uh, which is really frustrating when you're having to revise all of your material and, hey, tell your colleagues, hey, this is not quite up to date. Um, so um, that's really helpful. Also, as far as adaptability goes, we can also um, modify things. I think there was one little section in Biology 111, uh, which is uh, Majors Biology 1, that we wanted to have in, or maybe it was the reverse, we wanted to have it in Majors Biology 2, and um, they were able to put into our um, Blackboard shells that little piece of the module that we needed uh, so that we could cover it in both places. Um, but the biggest thing that I was really not expecting to love so much, I mean, they told me about the student feedback system and it was like over my head. I was like, okay, whatever, it sends out emails to students. But that right there has generated so much um, interaction between me and my students that I never had before. I had two emails this morning from students saying, thank you so much for the encouragement. Um, so I set up, you can set them up to be personalized or semi-personalized, or you can use just their straight emails, which are fine the way that they are. Um, and whenever students do a quiz, it'll act, it'll respond to them appropriately based on how they performed. And it's, my students get a little creeped out when they realize <laughs> that we can find out if they just rushed through it or if they didn't do the self tests or because the emails, some of them will say, hey, did you know you can do these self quizzes and it'll help you to do better on the regular quiz. Um, and I put in mine, my office hours and always on the negative ones, I said, why don't you come by and talk to me? Which has been um, a mixed blessing because I no longer have my peaceful office hour that no one, it was like crickets in here every, every day. Now, um, about three times a week, students will show up based on the feedback from their um, automatic emails that they receive. 
And again, that was not something I was really looking for in a system, but it actually aligns with some of this co our college's goals that we have for our um, QEP, where we're sending feedback to students about how they're performing. And it's been phenomenal. Um, and students have done so much better, I think, as a result of it. And I hope to have data to prove that soon, actually. Um, so I've talked a lot about what I like about it, but um, the, for students, the number one thing for students is how easy it is. This is what I get from them. They love the feedback that they get, but they don't know that that's com not coming from me. So I can't really say, you know, students love this about Waymaker because they don't know that kind of, fortunately, they don't know that. They think I'm really busy sending emails in the middle of the night when they're doing their work. Um, but it is incredibly intuitive. They just get onto Blackboard and right away they know, they can figure out how to, um, how to engage with the material, how to use it. It encourages them to um, work on things they may not know so well because it does a, a pretest at the beginning that asks them questions that help to evaluate how well they know the material. And one thing I always tell my students is don't waste time relearning something you already know. So um, to have a system that actually has adopted my own personal uh, philosophy about that is wonderful. So I'd like to just show you my Blackboard shell. I'm going to see if I can escape out of this. Hey, Alison, while well, you're um, navigating over there, we did have one question. And she just asked, do you have adjunct faculty using uh, this course, the Lumen course? And if so, how easy was it for them to adapt to using something a little different? Um, I am so glad that you asked that question because yes, we do have adjunct faculty using the Lumen course. Um, and it's wonderful because it is already there. Now we had uh, one of the things that happened as a result of all of our faculty for one of the first times ever getting together and really discussing, you know, what materials we wanted to use. One of the things that came out of that was a master shell where we loaded um, Lumen into, or I should say our IT people loaded Lumen into that course. And then that has um, been copied out to our shells. And it was very easy for them to accomplish this. I think they had it done within like the second day of the semester starting. And maybe as I show you my course, it might help you to understand how this would really accommodate either new faculty or people who aren't super comfortable with technology. We had a couple of people that were that had just finally gotten um, to where they were comfortable syncing their course with some with the old publishing company um, and also part time faculty adjunct faculty. So one of the best things about doing that is it means that you are more comfortable. Um, I don't know if that's the word. You, you feel more confident that there's consistency from one course to the next. You're not worried that everybody is teaching something different or leaving out something. There's just enough flexibility in it that, I mean, you can build on it to whatever degree you want, but you have like the basic format there for the students and you know that, um, that it's accessible for everyone. So this is my course. Can, can you guys see that? I don't know if I did that right. Anybody want to? Yeah, we can see it. It's cool. Okay. So um, this is obviously my view and I'll turn it into student view here in a minute. It's Blackboard course and um, well, there you're getting an idea of my announcements. I send a lot of announcements. So the teacher's resources I have on the left hand menu and if you click there, um, these are the resources that basically if you are an adjunct faculty member or a new, someone new to Lumen, you can tell right away um, <laughs> basically anything, anything you, any question you have is right here. Here's where you would find the um, faculty tools which allow you to set up your automated messages and you can um, change that to, you can change these messages so that they're like customized for you. I have a few idiosyncrasies that are, people are aware of that I have incorporated into those messages. Like I never capitalize my first name. So in my signature, it has it the way that I type it in every message that, that they get. So just an FYI there, that's, that's that. I'm not going to take you through all of that, but as you can see, uh, it has pretty much everything you can need. You could need, this is the course PDF. So that's really helpful for those students who are sad because they don't have a book to highlight. Um, you can give them that link. Um, I have actually put that in my coursework and um, they can access it there. The assignments are here. We have some, some faculty use those assignments, some don't. 
Um, I don't use them in my online class, and this, by the way, is, a, is a, an online course from the previous semester. Um, I don't use it in that course, but I do use them, modify them so that uh, I can incorporate them into my face to face course. Sometimes the material overlaps with the lab material a little bit um, and I don't want to use too much of it. So it's great that you can use it if you want or you can leave it if you don't want to to use it. Um, back to the resources. Uh, this right here, extremely helpful um, to explain to a naive um, new person using this all of the every you don't have to be constantly emailing support all the time be asking questions because most of your questions are going to be answered in here. Um, oh, and by the way, one of the best things about it, which I didn't put in my slide, you don't have to go out to some other website to do any of the things that you need um, to change to your course. You just do it right here in Blackboard, which is wonderful. Um, does anybody want to see anything in particular here? Okay, so if I go to my course, lecture coursework, actually I take it back. Let me change it so it doesn't look so weird to you guys. Um, so you're not gonna see all of my exams and everything. That just happens to be the way that I set them up. Obviously they are not gonna see those. The students are not gonna see those. So I always put my schedule everywhere so that students can never say I didn't know when that was due. But once they scroll down here, and I apologize, these are out of order. We had a little glitch with Blackboard last semester that made unit three always stick up here. Um, it actually arrived, the, the like new course just has the modules, it's not in units, so I organize it according to units. Let's see, I'm currently teaching this one, so I'll click on this one. Um, so students would click to open the module folder. I put the um, objectives um, on the folder uh, description, and then um, I give my students a study guide, but what comes with, uh, these module folders are what comes when, with uh, Lumen Waymaker when it's integrated into your LMS. So obviously I added a little description. Um, I added the videos. Students will click to open each module and what they have in the module is the study plan and the quiz and I added the PowerPoint. I just uploaded it there um, and uh, it was compliant. I didn't have to, I think I had to change Maybe the picture on the title slide was not, didn't have alt text, hello, but that's all I had to do to uh, make it so that I got the nice little green arrow when I uploaded it onto Blackboard. We do have a system that checks for compliance now. Um, so they have the study plan and the quiz. I always add, I'm a little bit, um, for, you know, kind of specific. I always put uh, an explanation or a a checklist of what you need to do just in case people have forgotten or they are having trouble understanding it. I don't know that may be what has contributed to my students seeming to have no trouble ac accessing it or using it, but I my colleagues all say the same. They have, you know, many of them don't put anything here and students don't have any trouble. They're like, oh, okay, let's click here on study plan and see what we have. So this is what students see. I actually took the show what you know um, just before the um, webinar started so that you could see that um, if you don't get all the questions right, it puts varying levels. Like mine says needs work. I tried to get it so this one would be red, but it wasn't. It'll be like green, orange, or red based on whether you know it or not. And so students start up here and um, they can also, you know, um, minimize it so they don't have to see it if they get bored looking at it. I don't know. Um, and then they just dive in and um, Giselle was kind enough to show you all of that material. So I won't trouble you with that. Um, but it does show up just so you can see it just show up right here in the blackboard shell. They don't have to go out anywhere. It's just right there. And then I should have done the next one. Um, I don't know if I can go back out. You can um, let me go back to study plan. And by the way, I don't spend a whole lot of time in here. And just the fact that I'm able to, <laughs> to navigate this pretty easily is a sign about how um, simple it is to use. Okay, so um, I think when you get to the end of this, let's see, you do your self check and it will, it will uh, take you to the Sergo, which is really awesome. It gives them an idea of like, how much they know and where they need to go with it. And sadly, I think I have trouble in this preview of getting out of here. So let me see if I can do it. 
Um, let me see. Yeah, I think I've troubled that, so I may have to exit that. And it might not let me down. Um, that's actually just an issue with our Blackboard. We actually have an older Blackboard, so that's part of the problem. Anyway, um, so I think that's my course. I also should probably mention that if students um, say that they uh, feel like they need another chance, that gives them two chances on the quiz, um, you can change that, obviously. Um, but um, it's pretty easy, and you know what, I can't go in there because of FERPA, but it's pretty easy to go in and um, figure out like what do students need um, in terms of reviewing their quizzes if they say there was a problem with their quiz. So um, any questions about the layout of the course or anything like that? So Alison, I think this goes a little bit with your student experience. We had a question that said, can you comment on the use of the tool by non-traditional students? Do they find it as easy to use or do they struggle a bit more? Um, so I get students from all walks of life. Um, I had, I think of the many students that I've now had go through the living courses, I had one student who um, was not a native English speaker and also wasn't really comfortable with technology. I'm not really, and they were in an online course, which was really tricky. And uh, she actually, as a result of the feedback from my, um, from the automatic feedback, she came in during office hours and I was able to walk her through it. So I think that she might be exceptional. Um, it is really, um, it's really pretty simple. It really honestly is. I think a lot of issues could be resolved with some um, maybe proactive, I hate to use that word, but proactive behaviors on the part of the instructor. So do a little, um, if you can, do an intro video that shows where the materials are, that guides them through it. Um, frankly, I didn't have time to do it the first semester we used it, and I did not have any issues the first semester. And I was teaching one, I was teaching three sections um, that were online, and then I was teaching a double section, so 50 students face to face, which was a lot. And um, I didn't have any issues with them. So I think the majority of students are going to find it really intuitive, would definitely be the word I would use. Does that answer your question? If you do have questions, you can continue to type them in the chat and I'll get them over to Allison or you can open up your mic and just ask questions there. Um, I, she's provided a ton of great information. So make sure that you put your your name, your institution or your store number and your email address so that we can get this information out to you. But go ahead and open your mics up or uh, type questions in the chat and we're happy to answer them. Um, I almost forgot this, but the uh, human body systems unit has potentially all of these modules, which we have turned off, um, or I have. We have not, so we actually, in the master shell, we provided this instruction. I think I developed this one, actually. We provided this um, information to instructors that says, you, and, and students can't see it, but instructors can. It just says the instructor has two options for unit four. You can either choose a couple of options in addition, a couple of modules in addition to module three, or you know, just cover module 13, sorry, I meant to say 13, and then delete all the other modules or make them invisible and just cover things in a little more detail, maybe if you want to, because, you know, faculty all have their favorite pet projects. So some people wanted to cover the nervous system. I felt comfortable just using the one module. Um, and then I included that human body systems module 13 in my um, final exam. Uh, which is not comprehensive. So I'm happy a quick to comment that you, yeah, a quick comment that you did a great job and your information was super helpful. And then a question on how many semesters have you been using Waymaker? This is the second semester. Um, I have taught both um, not ma both majors one and majors two. So both of the majors biology courses with it. Um, yeah. So, and you know, usually that first couple of semesters uh, is the hardest transition, I think. And um, it's been easy for students. It's been easy for faculty. 
that's been the big one is we've all been able to adopt it and implement it really quickly because we really kind of had to do it under we were in a time crunch with the ADA compliance issues um, and we've been thrilled I mean really thrilled with it it's it's even better than um, I thought it was going to be and but I did you know learn a lot about e OER and I looked at different resources available and um, the balance between open resources and the um, integrated LMS um, component is is great especially when it comes at a cost of less than $35 for students you just cannot beat that um, and I've been really happy with it anything else Oh, wait just a minute. Um, I know you're not with a Follett Bookstore, Allison. We do have a number of Follett Bookstore managers on here with the Follett Bookstore. Sadly, you guys are not one, but they do not mark up our materials. So wow. that's one thing that if you're an instructor that's at a Follett Bookstore, you're one of the bookstore managers, that there is no markup. It's $25 to the bookstore. We just do a little rev share behind the scenes because we're good partners with them. So that's nice. Um, that's really nice. We'll go ahead and, yeah. So we'll go ahead and leave this open for people to ask questions. Again, open up your mics if you'd like to. We'll stand for a few minutes, but as we're waiting to see if anybody has questions, just want to say thank you so much to Giselle for presenting some of the highlights that we have in the courses. And a special thank you to Allison. Um, it's awesome. Um, we can't replace having a faculty member talk about the course and how her students have reacted to it and also the experience that she's had. So really helpful to have that as well. So You're we'll give so you guys welcome. a few minutes. <laughs> We'll give everybody a few minutes to ask questions. If they come in after, we can always forward them through to Allison. Um, but happy to, to wait for just a few minutes and see if anybody has questions. Do you want me to stop sharing my screen so that you can have it back? Um, you can you can just leave your screen up. I think okay. it's or you can jump out of it either way. <laughs> okay, it's fine with me. So if you will take, type your um, email information in, we'll make sure you get a copy of the slides that we use and a copy of the recording that has Allison sharing everything. I think I will steal your screen share really quick. Um, and I'll show you where we place all of these. Okay. So we do have a Lumen follow-up webpage that is lumenlearning.com backslash follow it. If you scroll all the way to the bottom right-hand corner of the webpage, you'll see that this is where we have our monthly webinars here and the, um, the recording and the slides will be available for he here to pull down as well. So that's lumenlearning.com slash follow it. All right, again, thank you so much, everyone. Allison, thank you. Giselle, thank you for joining us. If we have additional questions, Allison, we'll go ahead and forward them to you by email. Um, but very grateful for you, everybody joining us today. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.